My friend, welcome to a new episode. So today we discuss on now a security architecture should think. So to do that, I'm helping myself with uh, just a couple of slides, but just for the visualization, nothing more. So this is what you find uh, as a typical uh, threat modeling into uh, an application. And so as you see, you see the component, uh, the user browser, talking with the web server, the application server, the backend. This one is the typical one uh, that you can find as visualization and threat model. So let's skip for now uh, the question on which type of threat model to use. I want more to focus on now think. From this, you see elements, way how they talk to each other, area and uh, how they exchange information the microservices uh, the connection to the uh, to the database but is it enough i'm asking this question to challenge your thinking because uh, let's see a typical flow so right now here you find uh, a flow that represents the client going to cdn going to firewall, load balancer in the DMZ, the pool member of the DMZ, another firewall connecting for the backend. Okay? So as you see, there is a big difference between the two. It doesn't consider this one, the standard one, doesn't consider the infrastructure itself, the underneath, and which layer is responding. Actually, it does miss the, uh, the CDN, but it doesn't consider the load balancer, it doesn't consider the firewall. So I mean, uh, a, a zoom in uh, on now is representing the threat and how does it represent the flow. So a new ML flow is uh, way, way more honest on, on what will happen. So you see from my browser how in the UML flow uh, I took the SSL and shake as a reference is going to a CDN, is, uh, uh, is going from the CDN to the DMZ, is, the SSL and shake is going through because the public IP is published on the load balancer. There is a pool member behind and that is going to connect to the backend on the LAN. Is it this one enough? And I will challenge you again. It's not. And I will explain you why. Because we don't know how the CDN is configured, which component of the CDN is there, a web application firewall, it does use uh, the client certificate uh, uh, for the shake, it does uh, serve cached items. It sounds silly because it's a CDN and so you expect that it does caching, but you can understand in a threat model how a malware cached into CDN outside your incident response visibility is in a way part of your uh, problem because it's obviously under your own responsibility as well uh, to monitor the cache. And so you need to see how the picture slide by slide get enriched and how the question uh, are becoming more and more important. Firewall, firewall configuration, what does it mean? I see an SSL and shake going through, so for sure no IPS, the SSL and shake is not happening there, so nothing encrypted there. Uh, nothing decrypted in there, there is no inspection, uh, there is another WAF, WAF is uh, the place uh, uh, where anyway you should see how the, the, the WAF is responding. Is for example a 404 going to be translated by the CDN or going straight from the load balancer to the client? And so as you see this flow is left to right but is miss uh, right to left and right to left is actually the most important for the attacker because the attacker he will discover your layer through the response and so if you have an NJX responding if it's a load balancer if the load balancer is having a WAF it's everything based on the response the fingerprinting of a WAF up and on the response so the entire industry most of the time work on this one that doesn't consider even the infrastructure and uh, even if we go and a developer 
kind of zoom in, in, in into new ML flow like a developer, but into the infrastructure, we see how one way an analysis left to right doesn't actually give you the picture that he, he, an attacker with uh, uh, Zap or, or Burp or whatever uh, uh, browser is checking the response. When you do web application security, what you do? You just check the request and the response. So all these diagrams are nice, beautiful, but you need to have the thinking. And the problem is people are starting to think only based on the diagram that is having in front. And so it's not anymore the brain to challenge the diagram. Is the diagram challenging the brain? That's uh, the reason for this video. So the flow and the response, the fact that the code gets translated by the CDN, the fact that uh, the firewall configuration needs to be in the picture. I, I, I understand that the layer 7 can't inspect because uh, just based on the SSL. But how many uh, architects are evaluating things without putting it into the context? Whatever firewall you see works for module, and the module can, uh, the module's triggering changes also the behavior of the firewall. So some modules are on top, and uh, uh, think about implicit rules. All those kind of information are part of a zoom in, but. If you are doing threat modeling, you are supposed to discover whatever can happen. And uh, what is funny is that most of the time you don't have a response. That web application wise are the most important in terms of the disclosure. And so, is the CDN capable to be bypassed? There is the GeoDNS, so based on which geo you are, and so the attacker using a VPN does it change? is uh, having a WAF, is anyway the first web server that you hit. And as you see in this diagram, I added all web servers. So what is uh, wrong most of the time is the thinking, not just the diagram. Because you can have an incomplete diagram. If your brain compensates that, it's OK. And so a logical representation is good, but it has to be logical. And most of the time, the industry is proposing stuff that is not logic. And so you need to have your brain challenging what you see in the analysis and what you'll check. Don't think that uh, the typical AWS uh, cloud kind of diagram is going to change. Because if you zoom in and you put it in this perspective, you see that you have the same problem. You don't have a response. You don't have a, a, an understanding of who respond to what. It's a bit easier now with a container service mesh because you know that is end to end. But uh, the concept doesn't change. If you are a security architect, you need to think as an attacker. It should be the first point. So challenge whatever diagram you see and don't start to think as the diagram if you are starting this job. And so always challenge and use your brain, but think as an attacker. If a CDN gets bypassed and the attacker can go straight into your origin because through, through an who is can just check what is the, uh, uh, the class that you use, the S that you use, and uh, find all networks. The CDN ability to, 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 to have uh, the visibility and uh, the ability to mitigate an attack is completely different. So all these things need to be challenged. So all my blogs, all my posting, everything is not just a, a, a reselling things that I say. I'm reselling the experience and I'm reselling which kind of mistake I see over and over in the industry. People take books. Books contain this one. Security architects think only about that. That's the biggest mistake. And we are not thinking as an attacker. The fact that a security architect doesn't do pen testing is not really logical. Because if you architect, you need to design and know how to get exploited. And so it's not true that this one is to zoom in. This one is the way to think as an attacker. 
because the attacker will try to bypass the, um, the CDN. He will try to enumerate uh, which kind of WAF is having, which CDN is having. He will try to see if a firewall uh, is responding directly. If you find a WAF, uh, he will try to bypass the WAF doing fingerprinting of the WAF. If there is a lateral move, you need to know how the service uh, 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 communicate to each other. Is he actually correct uh, to assume that there is an API between the two, or is a direct TCP and shake and can be used as a tunneling for an exfiltration? Those are the kind of question that a security architect should answer. And uh, most of the books that you read about security architecture are not stressing that, and that is a big mistake because a security architect needs to think as an attacker. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you appreciate and you enjoyed the time. Uh, this example was coming from my book. You have a title here. If you're curious to know what I think about the industry and uh, which announcement uh, we should make, you'll find it there. And uh, thanks once again for, my attention, for the attention and uh, subscribe so you'll get when uh, there is new content. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers.